So we're here to uh, look at the hand mixer, the control box. This is the screen, um, and it will attach to the actual peripheral unit there. Essentially, you turn it on at the back. It will load up. In the front, while it's loading, you'll see that there are two connections. One is black and one is blue. They are designed for the data and tube for the pressure in here as well. There's also a, a cord for the EMG electrodes as well that comes in there as well. In the front too you'll find the USB port where USB um, updates and patient data can be stored. On the screen you have the clinician mode. Down the bottom tools and support. If I click on tools it gives you your touch screen capabilities and also your ability to copy your database into the report. Also, if you click on support, it has information on who you can call for technical support for the device. Clinician mode is selected. When that comes up, it will load up all the clinicians in your particular clinic or facility that are loaded into the computer. You can add a new clinician by giving their information, password and so or you can select an existing one. To select an existing one, you click on it and it asks for the password that's already put into the system when you add that person in. I'm going to add my password in and your list of patients come up. When this list of patients come up you can either add a new patient or you put in some demographics, you have the ability to put in the affected side, the uh, hemiparesis side, the dominant side and whether they had a stroke, male, female, date of birth. When you tap onto a new field to enter a patient, a keyboard will come up. By tapping on the letters or on the alphabet there, you, you basically input the information. You can back up, you can backspace or delete and enter when you're moving on to the next one. So on and so forth, all the way through. Okay. When you're done, you press done. It'll take you to your list of patients. When you click on a patient, it will ask or prompt you for the patient's password. Each patient has their individual password that you determine when you put them in the system. I recommend that you use one that you are familiar with, that you will remember, and that you have them stored in a place where you can um, access them easily. Also, you'll have different programs here. Uh, you have the spasticity reduction program, the motor control down, the motor control up, and the advanced motor control programs. First of all though, let's hook it up. You've got your cords. You have a gray cord and a white cord. Your gray cord is your data cord and your white cord is for the pressure that moves the device. The white cord and the white little clip just clips in. On the gray, you'll see two little ridges. The arrow marks the ridges and you put that up and then slide it in. It should click. To pull it out, you pull it straight out. You don't twist. It slides backwards and unlocks. Clips in. Looking at the device itself, on the back of the device, you have two inputs. One for the white, which is, once again, air pressure. And the other is your data cord. Data cord. clicks in. I like to attach my strap at this point, just one of them. So that it can be placed on the patient. And you are ready to go.
All right, so we have our device. I'll make sure that all the straps are undone and that it's ready to be applied. Introduce the device to my patient and make sure that she is on the same page with what is going on and that we're going to put her hand in the device. She has some muscle tone in there, so I want to make sure that we can open her hand just a little bit enough to get it in. So we're going to start with the wrist and gently open the hand and get those fingers open. I tend to, when I do this, work my fingers in just to get a nice flat hand. That's good enough generally, just enough to get some range of motion in there. Then, when I address the, the device, we're going to come in over the hand and place the fingers inside. Now, in someone like Miss Freddie, she's got that tone and we've slipped it in just like that. She has a very short forearm, so we just slide it beyond the end of the forearm. Not all your patients will be here. It's very important to look at your axis. Here's the axis in here to make sure that she is nice and secure in there. One year, once you're happy with that, I place the fingers, make sure that my fingers are good, and then I'm supporting the knuckles, the MP joints. I place the strap over the end. Secure it. Good enough and make sure that these nuts on the side that secure the finger portion is secure. Make sure that she is comfortable, that her wrist is once more secure, and strap it up. Positioning is also very important, so you want to make sure that you position your patient so that they can achieve success. We use a trough for that, and just ensure that she is comfortable and that her shoulder is supported. Can you start? Um, this position is uh, used for uh, in our clinic, but you can use any position where you have the most tone reduction or at least the greatest opportunity for your patient to achieve success and reduce in their tone. So you can have it off the edge of the table, like that, or in their lap, or you could even support it yourself if you wanted to, to be involved in what's going on and give the patient some input. Positioning is important um, and it depends on your particular patient's needs and what you're trying to do with them. So uh, in, this, or in this particular client's case, we have a lot of muscle tone. And so what we're trying to do is uh, teach the patient how to reduce their muscle tone and increase their range of motion. That's the spasticity program. By clicking on the spasticity program, the gauge comes up. Comes up. You have the option to play or to quit, and the amount of cycles that you can choose. It defaults to 10. Also, it has the angle that the patient is currently positioned. As the hand moves, the angle will move. You can also here, hold time, select the amount of, or amount of seconds that you would like for that particular stretch to be maintained. It's from 10 to 120. For Miss Freddie, we're going to leave it at 30 seconds so she can stretch it out. By pressing play, air will be blown into the muscle and the wrist will be extended. As the wrist is, is extended, the amount of resistance to that movement is measured and represented in the program. At this point, you ask the client to relax. Take it easy, breathe nice and deep, and think happy thoughts about the world. Initially, you'll see that there's a yellow amount of tone. That is, that the yellow represents a moderate amount of resistance to that movement. As she relaxes and concentrates, that goes down and reduces. You can relax for me, Miss Freddie. Just relax, bring it down. Nice deep breaths. And she's at 41 degrees. 42. and relax. Notice that the joints are all secured. I've checked it. It was one repetition. Her wrist is good. I'm very pleased with my positioning. 